Hello friends, today I'll make a video on ship energy efficiency management plan, what it is all about, what all technical terms are there and what all do you really need to know in this topic. Let's get started. If you're a sailor, you are already aware that fuel consumption is the biggest cost of running the ship. Everyone is trying to save it, plus environmental requirements and since the Treaty of Kyoto Protocol, Many contracting states are committed to reduce the greenhouse gas emission. Thus a new chapter 4 on energy efficiency to Marpole Annex 6 was added. MEPC 62 was held on July 2011. After MEPC 62, the requirement to have a ship energy efficiency management plan was made compulsory for all the existing ships. And the new builds in addition to this are required to have an EEDI energy efficiency design index. Let's start with the understanding of ship energy efficiency management plan. All ships greater than 400 gross tonnage are required to have a ship energy efficiency management plan. Once a survey has been done on those ships and this plan is already approved, they are issued with the energy efficiency certificate. Next question that comes to mind is what this plan is all about. This plan has two parts. There is part one and part two. And part one is divided into four stages. Four stages are planning, implementation, monitoring and evaluation. In other words, in the planning part, what they do is they identify the current usage of fuel on board, where all the energy is being used. Then an assessment is made to identify which all areas the energy can be saved and who are the people who are responsible to make such savings. Then once you have the plan, you need to implement it. In the implementation stage, the plan which has been made in the stage 1 is implemented. So all the areas which were identified where the savings can be made, the savings begin. The third stage begins after that. It's the monitoring stage. You collect data. What has been the consumption so far? And after making such changes of energy savings, how much fuel is being saved? And finally, the evaluation. In this stage, the result of monitoring stages is evaluated and the effectiveness of the ship energy efficiency management plan is assessed. And based on the assessment, further improvements in the plan can be discussed and made. Part 1 covers a lot of features and gives a lot of recommendation on how a fuel saving can be done on board a ship. Not going into the details, it basically means you know the parameters, how the main engine, auxiliary engine, boilers need to run and you just maintain the parameters as per that and most probably your engine will be running efficiently. If not, then you do the troubleshooting. Deck side, you maintain the trim, you calculate how much ballast is required, what is optimum. For this, there are various softwares and tools which are now being made available on board the ship so that the ship can be run as efficiently as possible. Let's talk about part 2 now. In the part 2 is about reporting of fuel oil consumption to the flag state. All ships of 5000 gross tonnage and above need to maintain the part 2 of ship energy efficiency management plan while part 1 was for 400 gross tonnage and above. All these ships need to report their accurate fuel oil consumption figures to the administration annually. The method of reporting and reporting procedures are covered under part 2. Now that the plan is in place, we need to identify if the plan is working out or not. So for that, there are two factors which have almost the similar meaning. One stands for the current situation and one is futuristic. Now let's talk about them. The first is EEOI, which stands for Energy Efficiency Operational Indicator, which basically stands for the amount of CO2 that is released for carriage of every ton of cargo for one mile. Second is energy efficiency design index, which is actually the same the amount of CO2 that is released for carriage of one ton of cargo for one mile. However, in this case, the EEDI is set by the IMO and every year there will be further reduction in that so that the fuel efficiency can be improved with time as per the technological developments. Here is a diagram which indicates how the reduction factor for EEDI is aimed at. 
Now that we are in phase 2, there is a 20% reduction factor from what was initially designed. And it is expected to go up to 30% from 2025 onwards. Increase in reduction factor means reduction in the amount of CO2 that is being released for carriage of 1 ton of cargo for 1 nautical mile. EEDI is set by the IMO standard. However, EEOI is calculated using following mathematical formula. EEOI equals the amount of fuel consumed, the distance travelled, the amount of cargo that was carried and multiplied by the conversion factor. I hope it was a useful video for you. Please leave your comments or feedback below. Thank you for watching.